Hi, everyone. Welcome back for the Knitting Posse. I'm Kim. I'm Kate. Lauren. Oh. <laughs> I'm Laura. <laughs> We're just so excited to be back. I know. I'm Kim. So long. <laughs> anyway, it's October 14th here in Connecticut on a gorgeous fall day. Almost, almost Summer. too warm for me. Look at Kate, Kate's in her August sweater. It's that warm. But we'll take it. And uh, gosh, it's been over a month since we had our last podcast and we're happy to be back and sorry, but just life was busy and but yeah. all good stuff. So yeah. uh, we're glad to be back since we've been um, away. We've been working on our knit along sweaters, uh, which is we're sponsoring a knit along with Beth McDonald Stone, a hashtag KPBMS. That's, That's it. it. That's what I said <laughs> on Instagram. Um, and it started September 1st. Yep. It ends October 31st. And the idea was just to knit any Beth McDonald stone pattern you wanted to, because there's plenty to choose from. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we'll talk about ours and our, some of our finished objects and whips, but uh, it's, uh, I've, I've enjoyed knitting these sweaters, so. Um, let's see. So yeah, there's gonna, we had a cast on party for that. That was September 1st, was it? Yep, yep. That was fun. We did that on Zoom and it's, oh, just always so much fun to see faces and names and uh, putting names together with Instagram tags. And it was, it was a great time. It's such a, it's, it's really humbling. Um, well, let's see, what else? Then uh, Lorian and I did the, um, did the halfway check-in on Instagram live. That's um, right. And that was fun too, except it, my comments stopped going. So Lorian had to kind of answer like all the questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, but it, is, it does end at the end of October and uh, yep. please, um, not too late. There's still yeah. plenty of time for someone to knit up a short sleeve sweater or a tank, summer tank, um, Trunk Island tank. Uh, sorry. I just, just it doesn't have to be an FO, correct? I don't um, think so. No, not that? for the hashtag. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So on Instagram, we'll be drawing a prize or prizes from the hashtag KPBMS. And then on Ravelry, we're drawing from the FO thread on Ravelry. And you know right. what? Maybe if we're feeling generous, we'll draw from the chatter thread on Ravelry as well. <laughs> yeah, because we have lots of great prizes. Great prizes, yeah. This yeah. is from the knitting place, from Dinah at the knitting place. Yep. Um, Beth McDonald Stone will offer some of her patterns. Jody from Flower Hill Fleece is do generously donated awesome. many skeins of yarn. Yep. And Joan from Fitzhugh Bags donated a great bag as well. And so Pat, we, also, right? we also have a bag from a knitter satchel from Pat. Yep. It's on its way. Okay. Uh, here yeah we haven't even seen it yet i know we haven't seen it in real life we've seen a photo just seeing if i still have the photo i'm not sure if i do no, don't show them make it a surprise a surprise yeah. okay yeah. <laughs> it's like it. it'll be a mystery prize mystery that's great prize. <laughs> yeah. there we that's, go that's so, more fun um, yeah so, yeah all right let's uh yeah. let's get started on um, what we're wearing and Lorianne, you want to kick us off yeah here so I'm wearing my simple hug cardi cardigan. That's the end of it right there. It's a pattern by Cozy Up Knits. I knit it last this about this time last year. Yeah. The yarn is by Cold Go Farm, and it's a DK. Uh, it's a really if you're looking for what I consider to be a much quicker uh, cardigan pattern, in part because of the short sleeves, but you could lengthen the sleeves if you want. And you can see my project notes because I decided to knit it in the round and steak it. Looks great. Okay. Looks Thank great. Uh, Laura. No, who's next? Kate. Kate, Kate, Kate. Um, I am wearing my Trunk Island tank by Beth McDonald Stone. Um, I love it. It's like 75 degrees today. And um, if you see me at Rhinebeck, I might still be wearing it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be pretty warm um, on Saturday. So um, this is um, knit in the yarn uh, Egyptian fingering by uh, Hell Double from Flower Hill Fleeces. Um, 
And it's just, I love it. I love the color. I love the fit. I love it all. <laughs> it looks great it looks color great on you. On you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Laura. Um, I yesterday pulled out all my woolens because uh, I'm going to Colorado tomorrow and it's um, snowing in the mountains. And I was like, I gotta get some sweaters. And I pulled out some of my scarves and I pulled this one out, which you, I can't remember if I've worn it before, but it's, I'm not gonna undo it. It's this big, long, but skinny, um, eyelet um, scarf shawl type thing uh, and it's the Alinda wrap by Amba O'Brien and I knit it in um, a Swans Island uh, lace weight merino silk and it's just really soft and lightweight and it's cooling down a little in, in my house so I might be able to keep it on the whole time um, but it's a, an oldie but a goodie. Yeah yeah mm -hmm. you do love that shape too. I do long and skinny. Mm -hmm. It's Not so big, soft too. I remember yeah. that yarn. Kate has the a different has the same yarn in a different color. I don't know where she's at. It took uh, me a long time. I'm I not that anywhere. <laughs> it's, it's it's in hiding. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a lace weight and it takes a long time. And I would go through stretches where I would knit on it and then I'd put it down and do some other stuff. So mm -hmm. it took a long time to make, but um, worth it in the end. Yeah, it looks great. I'm not wearing any knitwear today. Um, I'm going to warm. It. It, is, it is warm. It is warm. But so we'll just go right into, let's do FOs first. I kind of want to see FOs. So, Lorianne. Hey. So I have a few. Isn't that great, Amore? Thank you. These are my colors. I received this yarn for last year for the holidays. It is Chelsea Lux hand dyed and it is their colorway caramel apple. It is her duet, which is her cobblestone or slub base along with mohair. And I loved it so much that I got a second set and knit a sweater and knit a love note with it, a long sleeve love note. And I had enough yarn left over that I thought maybe I can actually eke out the hat too. And literally that's oh. what I, <laughs> uh, I The pattern is by Christina Lumborg, who is the, the dyer of Chelsea Lux Yarns. And I, am, I, I love this, I've worn it. I haven't woven in the ends and I've still worn it a couple of times. It's very warm. It's, I have two remaining skeins of mohair in my stash and there will be no more accumulating. So that's one item. Uh, so I think on another episode, maybe even the last one, I showed you a sweater a tank sweater that looked a lot like this, but now it's a T. <laughs> I re-knit the uh, Sienna tank, which I knit in this yarn. Uh, I wasn't happy with how it looked on me. It, the pattern and all of it was, it was fine. It just wasn't, I needed something a little more structured. It had a kind of crisscross back. It was kind of cool. It exists no more. Um, and I knit it, but I love the yarn so much, which is by Hawari Bazaar. And uh, it's, I think the colorway is called Serena. It could be the name of the base also. So I'm not sure. It's her 7525 fingering. Um, it's her Sailor Moon July Club colorway. And I had recently also finished a, an outline tee. So what I did, and, and I wanted to talk about it just a little bit because sometimes, you know, we, we knit things and we may not love, like the, how the picture looks may not be exactly how the end result comes out. And it doesn't always look the same on you as it did in the pictures. But, and I, I always hear when I frog something, I hear Kate, frog it, frog it, because we want to love our knits and we pay good money for our, um, our yarn. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I really enjoyed the outline tee and this design element, this lace panel in the front was part of the original tank. And I liked that a lot, but I could see that it would be pretty easy having knit the outline tank to add that to, uh, I'm sorry, the outline, having knit the Sienna tank to add that to the outline tee. So that is pretty much what I did. I unwound the yarn, it was kinky. I did not rewash or skein it, I just knit it had not sit in that for that long and I knew I would block it anyway, um, again, and it's totally fine. And I've worn it already 
a couple of times. I have woven in the ends on that one. Had you, Lorian, had you washed and blocked it when it was a tank? Yes, I had you, already done that. Before you it? Okay, yeah, I had done that too. Um, this may look, so that's my second finish. I am still working through, oh, that color's too dark. You can see it, it's green, um, right? It's a green, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. My dark holiday green. knit, so this is my third holiday stocking. This is not a gift, this is like a houseware, like a home, home knit. Mm -hmm. And I knit this in, it's called the Magnolia Stocking. It's by White Oak Knits. It is knit in Lion Brand Yarns Wool Ease. This color is called Kale. And I'm doing the same thing. This knits up fairly quickly because you hold bulky weight double. I, I really like it. it, makes a very substantial piece. I am just throwing this in. I'm already working on my last one of those in this color, which looks really dark red, but it's a bright red. It's called Cranberry, oh. same yarn. That's three. Uh, I'm gonna show you this. So I'm, I, I always count enough and it's something as an FO, even if I haven't woven in the ends. Oh, totally. I've yep. worn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Definitely. If the ends are inside. Yep, they're in. <laughs> this is my hanging leaves uh -huh. sweater mm. by Beth McDonald Stone. And this is my knit for the cow. I used Farmer's Daughter Fibers yarn. The base is called Pishkin DK. It is 100% Rambouillet uh, and the colorway is Sinopa. And it's, it's kind of a wine, a purpley wine color. Um, I have made some modifications, not to the, you know, um, not to the yoke, the lace pattern, but simply making some changes to the length of the yoke and where I did the sleeve divide as well as the sleeves themselves. I like a tighter fit sleeve, a snugger sleeve uh, in general, and I have a folded cuff. They're long enough to have a folded cuff with my dangling <laughs> loose end. So I am um, going somewhere where it's going to be 76 tomorrow. I'm going to upstate New York. It's gonna be 76 tomorrow, 66 on Saturday and 56 on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So there's a good chance these ends will get woven because I think I'm gonna bring this and wear it. I really, really loved this yarn. I cannot say enough. It is a sturdy DK, uh, but it's soft at the same time. It is not toothy at all, but it feels substantial. And my last, I, I wanted to say, I have written my show notes up five times because I had all these things and I just forgot to stick them in the notes. I had a pile sitting on my lap and I thought, oh, I didn't write this one up. So this is, my one of my latest finished objects, which I might have worn today had it actually not felt like August in October. This is the Elephant Promenade sweater by Boho Chic Fiber Company. I knit it in wool folk. Wool folk mm -hmm. in their tinned, tinned base, which is their fingering. Uh, in the colorways number two and 15, they don't have names. It's a warm gray and black. Uh, and I received this yarn as a gift and I bought the black and it just, it worked up beautifully. I have used, I think we've all used wool folk at some point in time. Um, I have used this fingering, it, you, it's, I think you knit it kind of on a three. So this took quite a while, the color work I knit on a four. You can see my end needs to be woven in. Did I make modifications? I think the only modifications I made were just to the body length. It was kind of a longer tunic and I didn't need it quite as long. So, uh, and maybe to the, maybe to the arms, this length of the arms as well. But um, I really love this sweater. It's going to be very warm. Wool folk is this Ovis wool and it's super yummy and it's super warm. Out. Nice. <laughs> I love, I, I didn't realize you made that in wolf folk up first. And then when I saw it on your Instagram, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It is warm, but I'm never really hot in wolf folk. Like I feel like it breathes, breathes well. Yeah. Yeah. I have a poncho. I, I, I knit one sweater and I guess I knit the turtle dove, but I didn't keep it because it, it just wasn't the right cut for me. It's one of right. those examples. Mm -hmm. um, so I gave it to my daughter. 
but I don't, it's my, so it's really my first sweater. I have a cowl that I knit in it, that this in the fingering weight base, which is very lofty. It has a lot of loft, that yarn, a lot of air. So it's um, good. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of echoes. My first is my Beth McDonald Stone knit along sweater. It's the Creeping Fig pullover. Um, I knit mine in the San Gurn double Sunday. Um, and the color is called Sailor in the Dark. I found that, I don't even know where I found it, but it's a really dark, dark navy. Um, I modified it a little bit because I don't know if you remember, but the neckline was way too tight for me on the size two, which is what I was knitting. Um, and there's a dog outside my window and Spike is right behind me. So he may start barking, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I cast on for the size two and then I didn't do the um, increases, um, the first few increases to, to, get it back, I'm, to get it back to the size one, which is the size that I knit for the body. And then I also um, modified it by doing a split hem on the bottom of it. Um, so it's done, it's cozy. Um, I probably won't wear it till February, <laughs> but I love the yarn. The pattern was really fun. I liked the, um, the cables here on the raglan was a really cool detail. Um, so that is done. Um, my second FO um, was a gift for someone. Um, it was the Musselberg hat. Oh. I have already gifted it. This I knit in Gage Dye Works. Um, that's what it looks like open. Um, uh, sock yarn. Uh, it's called Whiskey in a Teacup. Um, I really enjoyed knitting it actually. And it was a really comfortable hat. I tried it on before I gave it away. It's really cute. So I may have ordered another skein of Gage Dye Works yarn to knit one for myself. <laughs> um, and that pattern is by uh, Yasolda um, Teague, I think her name is. Yeah. Um, so that was a fun knit. Um, my last FO, again, um, I held it in my Fits You Perfectly project bag, which I loved. And this is what I can show you, the yarn. <laughs> it was a test knit for Making Stories Magazine. Um, the yarn I used was Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. And it's kind of blowing out. It's like a greenish purplish wow. color. And then there was a pop of this like highlighter color. I think this is Hue Loco. Um, but I don't remember and I don't have a tag for it. It was just in my stash. So you will see that um, when Making Stories Magazine issue seven comes out because I can't show it until, um, until that's ready to come out. Um, and those are my FOs. I really didn't knit a whole lot in September. I was really slow in September. I can build Ikea furniture like nobody's business. We moved <laughs> both of our boys into um, apartments up in Boston. And um, I can get that stuff done, but there was not a lot of knitting that got done. <laughs> Just a whole nother craft. Exactly, exactly. And it is like a craft because like reading the directions, it's like Legos when the kids were little, like there's no written directions, it's all pictures. So if you're not good with that, which Rich is okay, Ian, not so much, um, Devin's okay, um, but uh, I can do it. So, and I'm patient enough to go through it step by step by step. Um, they tend to jump ahead and miss a step and then have to go take things apart. I'm like, that's not well, that's what happens when you're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's not talking about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Laura, so, those are my that? FOs. Nice. Um, thanks. Okay. So, um, October's a busy, busy month in my house. All three of my children were born in October. Um, my younger two are turning 24 on Saturday. I can't believe it. Hallelujah. How did that happen? So I knit something for each of them. Um, and I think you guys saw this as a whip. I don't remember how far I was, but this is the 
Koigu um, linen stitch um, scarf. Oh, cool. Um, and it has um, a, a, a fringe that you work as you're doing it. And it's um, grays and navy blue. And um, I got the kit. It's Koigu premium painters palette merino. And um, I used the church mouse pattern, but I really think you can probably get a free pattern because it's just a linen stitch. It's pretty easy. Um, and I saw the kit on um, the knitting place of these colors. And I just mm -hmm. thought, because a, a lot of the koi goos are really, really <laughs> colorful. And I honestly would love to do one for myself um, in some really bright, fun colors. But I just thought that um, my son, who lives in Colorado, Beautiful. flying to see tomorrow would like this. Hopefully he does. And then my second one, and it's actually still damp and it's been drying for a while, um, for his brother, who's turning 24, is the Escher Ooh. Cowl by um, Sweater Freak in its Clinton Hill Cashmere DK. And it's still- Do you damp. like him better? Sometimes? That's what I was just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um no <laughs> no but um he is really into Escher and he got my husband really into Escher my husband's actually been buying like Escher prints and stuff and when I saw it I just thought it was really cool it was the Escher connection not the cashmere liking him more um but I have to say it calls I got this skein. it's one you know you can just it's two colors one skein of each yes and um I, I think it worked out fine, but I, so it's hard to explain, but you do one pattern where, I guess it's this way. I started at the bottom here and the, the dark gray is the main color. And then you're supposed to switch and the shape shifts, you know, which is an Escher type thing to the white. Well, you're supposed to do four repeats of the black and then four repeats of the lighter gray. It, the original is in white. I ran out of yarn. Oh. And my gauge is exact. I measured, I didn't do a swatch because mm. how, how can you swatch with cashmere that costs $40 oh. a fall? <laughs> so like, um, but I actually think it worked out. I think it might've been too long. It's a good size. It's great. Yeah. It's a great size. And, Wait, um, does it switch over? Like, where does it switch? <clears throat> I know so, my eyes are playing tricks on mine are too. Well, well, that's the yeah. Escher thing. It's the tessellation, yeah, yeah. which is a big Escher thing, which Colin was really into. So it's a light gray and the shape is in the dark gray. The light gray is a little different here. Yes. And then here, I only got one row that's oh, the light gray okay. being okay. the main okay. shape and okay. I ran out of light gray. I, I actually had dark gray left. Okay. Um, but I ran out of light gray and I was not going to try to buy one more skein because then yeah. that would be no. ridiculous because already that was an expensive cow and he's moving oh. into the city and I just thought like in the city like going Very out. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of fun. So those are my only two FOs because I also nice. had a crazy busy, so most of it fun. <clears throat> not all, you know, like I, we traveled and, but September and October have been crazy busy for us. And, um, I also have not had a lot of knitting time, so not a lot of FO action here. You know, you guys said, do you, do you, why does one get cashmere? But I will say, in my experience, knitting linen stitch is much more labor intensive. It, oh, it this, is. this took it is. much longer. As oh, yeah. Time yeah. So I think it's this, important. This I did in a weekend. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. That, this took a while. You know, that's really a labor of love to do. I have knit that pattern and it, I couldn't, it's, it's almost deceiving when you look at it because you think, right. oh, it's not yes. that big of a project. I think it was, I think I cast on 450 stitches. Oh, that. you knit it long. long. Oh Ooh. yeah, that's the slip stitch is okay. that way. It's, it's not the way. way. Yeah. So it's a little so, deceiving, A right? row but takes a long time. Yeah. Even yeah. though yeah. it's, it's very, slip yeah, stitch. It's, it's a very labor intensive project because the nature really, of the I love stitch. Grant more. <laughs> more time on him. <laughs> watch, right? I spent more money on the other one, but more time on this one. Did he come oh, out no. first? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Grant I, did, yeah. I yeah. think um, Pearl Soho has a linen stitch scarf that might be a free pattern because yeah, I, I, I did it one for Rich at one point. Um, yeah. yeah, I just really liked the way that- you, I like that too. 
yeah. that you you don't go back and tie the fringe on you incorporate it you knit each row and leave a tail at either end and then you know I like cut it. that and I like so that. I just liked it and I think I'd already purchased the pattern a long time ago so I was like yep that's Perfect. what I'm doing so. I've been looking um and my daughter's boyfriend wants mm -hmm. asked for a scarf for Christmas and um that both of those are really nice choices um, yeah, I, it? yeah, because I think it's He's cashmere worthy right now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and linen stitch. <laughs> but it's going to take stitch longer. Takes much longer to grow because you're basically, yeah. it's like mosaic. You're only knitting, you're not even knitting a full it takes row. Two each, things to get two one passes row. Right. to get one row, right. Yeah. So yeah. it's, but it's, it's also, yeah. it's a skinny scarf. I think this is like six inches. You could keep going. Mine turned out a little longer. I think maybe I should have cast on a few less stitches and maybe made it a little thicker, but whatever. No, but then it? you can wrap it twice, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, sorry, the dog's barking because the oh. Amazon truck just pulled up. Oh, so yay. <laughs> he goes crazy. He acts like we're killing him when he, when somebody shows up. <laughs> Anyway, um, I only have one FO, same thing, busy, but great fall so far. Um, and I finished my Beth McDonald's, my KP BMS, the yes. creeping, creeping fig boxy sweater also. Sorry, is that so annoying? No, go ahead. Fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. We <laughs> can do done. The leaving soon. Yeah. Um, I used uh, Hudson and West Forge and the color Raven, big surprise there. <laughs> and I think this, I know, I knit the size two. Um, I made a few modifications. Um, I made the sleeves much longer. Of course, I don't like the three quarter length yeah. or it was. Um, but what I did like about her cuffs is that the cuff, actual cuff was really long. Like the, the ribbing was long. And that was a nice, uh, that was a nice part of it. Oh, here comes crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, same with the hem the hem I knit the whole body longer nice. and then the hem is nice and long also so um yeah I knit the size two. it took <laughs> it said six, six skeins I barely used any of the six skeins so I have enough to make a hat or something like that and it's it's black so I can yeah. you know it's going to be a great uh, work sweater for me like it's just it'll fit over another shirt it's boxy, it's big, and it's definitely going to be warm and good for working outside. Yeah, okay, I agree. The side panel was was really fun to there do. You, the, yeah, that's the, a good view. Is of that it. a good photo yep, of it? Yep, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And unfortunately, the, you know, the black doesn't give it any show it how pretty it is. So, um, I I'm looking for all. I, it by the way, this yarn blocked beautifully too. When I was knitting with it, it was had some thick pieces and thin pieces. And I was surprised. I was like, it wasn't very uniform, but it, it bloomed and it's soft and, um, it got, it, it's very consistent throughout now. So happy about that because this was not an expensive yarn. This was, you know, it was when you need six skeins of anything, I guess it's going to add up. Um, but I hope I win a prize in the knit along. No, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry I'm not taking anything <laughs> um and that's all I have I don't have any other FOs so I was really I'm like get this done if the sleeves happened and I'm like just finish the sleeves I did one at a time because um I don't know I just I think <laughs> because I didn't know how long I wanted the sleeves to be. Um, so I wanted to um that's exactly what I did I wanted to be able to try it on as I went along so that's one more Beth McDonald stone sweater for me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good collection. Um, yeah, what do we have, whips now? Yeah. Yes, see what you've been doing. Okay. If your name is Pat, look away. <laughs> Unless you can't wait. Okay. I'm guessing uh, she can't wait. Well, so. Uh, my I would friend, not look away if I was Pat. My friend, she's actually been waiting a very long time. She has. She has been waiting a very long time. Pat's birthday, like several of ours, is in March. And Pat sent me some yarn to knit a project for her. Wait, and how many years ago, Lorian? No, it was this same year. Oh, okay. All right. It was the same year. But um, circumstances came yeah. up this spring. And 
Mm. I, by the time this would have been on my needles, it was summer. I did not want to knit something in DK. So, and I'm going to acknowledge the, the um, cord is not going to be long enough for you to see the full. Ooh, piece. that's cool. Really yeah. pretty. Yeah. So this is a shawl by Tammy Gore. It is called Relentless. I have never, ever knit a Tammy Gore pattern. So that was also really inspiring for me. Um, and the yarns are, so this, uh, the light white-ish color, which has some subtle speckling is by Cozy Color Works and the color is called Blueberries and Cream. Mm. And the other colors are by Magpie, Magpie Fibers in their swanky DK. And the mm. colors are, this one's called In the Navy. The, this, the, the blue that's actually in this is called the calling. It's a little bit different. This one's brighter, um, but we're, we're working with what we have. And then this color is called Paris Train. Mm, so, so I will need to dip into these other colors. And, oh, and I'm using my prim needles. Do you guys like them? I do. Yeah, I do, but I only have one size, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want. I had used it their crochet hook, and thought that was pretty cool. Not having much experience with crochet hooks, and then when I saw the uh, the um, thick circular, I thought, oh, let me give it a try. What do you so think? So the problem I am having is I really like this needle, but now that the shawl is growing, I can't change them out. I nearly always use interchangeable well, needles. Well, and they don't make really long cords either. I think yeah. their longest cord is like a thirty-two inch. Uh, and that's probably, this is a, yep, a 32 inch, a size seven. Yeah. So it's been a very enjoyable knit. I must say I had not knit brioche. I know how I've knit plenty of brioche, but I had not in a while. So it was a little rusty and that took me some time to get my, get my momentum back with brioche. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, okay. If you are doing the West Knits Mystery Knit Along and you don't wanna see clue one, yeah, which was which has already been a week. So it's all over Instagram, it look is. away. <laughs> but I'm going to show you my clue one here. That's the backside actually. It's so oh. interesting because everyone is taking pictures of the backside of the shawl. This is the front. I'm stretching it out so you can kind of see more of the colors. Uh, the yarns I'm using for this are, well, let me, let me start with pink. <laughs> I got some look up blush needles tips. I got them from Patanga Yarns on Etsy um, and I needed size four. So I, I was able to get the, the pink tips. I, I, I love them. It doesn't really matter what color they are, but I, the pink makes me smile. Uh, my yarns are by... Chrysalis, Chrysalis Yarns in her Atkins sock and to the navy and the lavender are in that. My, the yellow is, the bright yellow is by the Sheepy Shire. This is something I won, her pixie sock, uh, fingering weight color, it's called Slice of Life. And I really, I love that color. And Chrysalis, um, also, the, the tan is by her, it's her Merino, no, Marion Merino fingering, and it's a non-super wash. The color is called green. And then this is from Yarn Bee, uh, which is um, the kind of honey brown color. I do want to say, if you're not familiar with Chrysalis, I absolutely, it's my first time using her yarns. I love the color saturation in her yarns. This navy is, it's stunning. It's, there's no way it's gonna be captured so well. It's better on my Instagram. Um, her name is Mindy. She's a dyer out of Texas. She's autistic I strong, and she's very forward about it and puts it out there. I, I cannot recommend her yarns enough. And I stumbled on her in a giveaway and won a gift card to her shop. Uh, so that's, that. this will be on my in my hands tomorrow morning when Clue 2 comes out and I'm awake and traveling. Uh, one, two. Okay. <laughs> this one's going to be a little hard to show. Maybe you can see my knitting barber cords. 
but I'm doing a bottom up sweater. So these are my sleeves. Usually I do top down and I think a lot of people prefer that, but I get, especially when you have to add heavy like sleeves onto a heavy sweater, if you're not knitting in pieces, um, I just, I was really in the mood for, for a change up. And I have been inspired by the Garland sweater, which is designed by Stephanie Lotven, uh, and it's designed in fingering weight. And I think I saw it when Lisa of the Stop Shop and Knit podcast was test knitting it last spring. And I just, I loved it. In March, I was out of town and visited a yarn shop and procured some yarn and intended to knit the sweater that's been waiting since March. Uh, the colors are treasured by Spun Right Round. It's a really beautiful, like, chartreuse green. Uh, the Huntress is this. It's by Megs & Co. It's her BFL DK. By Megs & Co. And that's this really pretty emerald mm -hmm. dark green. It's a tonal. And the main color is this very, um, it's a farm yarn by by Long Meadow Farm and it's a three I believe it's a three ply DK uh, it's natural colored long wools and farm flock white sand and I will be adding some enhancements with this red so these two colors will make up kind of a, a vine or a leaf pattern the cream is in the background I've decided I wanted to do a, a small balloon sleeve with an I-cord edge in the dark green and there will be some little berries in that color um, additionally. So um, I have the body, but doesn't it just doesn't look like anything, <laughs> but it's going, <laughs> it's going. And that maybe, I feel like I had another whip. Let me just take a peek. Oh, I showed you my... Yeah, the stocking. Yep, all mm -hmm. set. Great, busy gal, huh? Yeah. Good thing you have a long car ride coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's also a lot of variety if you think about it. Yeah, you know. right. Um, Kate, your whips. Um, my whip. <laughs> your whip. My whip. Um, <laughs> I um, decided after I finished this um that I would knit another sweater and actually I have sweater quantities like picked out for other sweaters that I bought and I just wasn't like into any of those and so I decided to hop on the love note train and like a song I pulled out well I keep thinking the love note <laughs> <laughs> um so I pulled out um, some yarn from my stash. Um, I am holding Julie Aslin Fino, which is a 75 Merino, 15 cashmere and 10% silk with Shibui Silk Cloud in the colorway suit, which um, one skein is left over from my Like a Cloud and one skein was left over from Kim's Like a Cloud. Mm -hmm. And I am holding those two together. And um, I really like the result. Um, the, the provisional cast on neckline um, had to start it like three times, but I finally <laughs> got it. And it was mostly because I don't know how to crochet. I did a crochet cast on. And what for provisional cast on you go back and add, you just go back the, and add it. And I'm not really sure why Lauren, you knit this. Why? why? Yeah, I knit it twice. Um, I think it allows you to control I think the amount. I think because you, you may, first of all, it's such a loose, it, this is why, because it's such a loose yes. gauge yes. that when you actually go and put it on, if you, if you did not have the option to change the neckline, okay, you might not be happy with it. Okay. So I think it, it, it allows you to really um, size the neckline as you want it to. 
I think I'm definitely going to do some decreases. I haven't read what I'm supposed to do, but I'm definitely going to do some decreases. So I've tried it on and actually the lace blocks out nicely, even when you just put it on. I only had two skeins of the Fino and two skeins plus a little tiny ball of the Silk Cloud. So I did the yoke and a couple inches on the body and then I wanted to get the sleeves done. So I think my next step is I'm going to do the neckline. And then from there, I'll just knit, 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 knit till I run out of yarn. And I have I think, a good- I think I, I think I have some more Shibui. Oh, do you? Yeah, suit. I um, might need it. I might need it. I have a good like three inches on the body and um, mine, uh, uh, my body is on my knitting barber cord, oh, which is pulling out of some of the stitches here. Um, so- um, which I love. I used that on the bottom. I used it to hold my sleeves when I was doing my sleeves. I did do my sleeves two at a time, which I love. Um, and I did them a little differently. I, I did some decreases, slowly decreasing them down. Um, and I kind of fit it to what my ranunculus is mm -hmm. because it reminds me very much of the ranunculus. Um, so that's how I'm kind of fitting it. But so far, so good. I like it a lot. And it's really fast. I think I started this like the beginning of the week and, um, and I wow. love it. Um, and I'll talk about my new light. I don't know if you can, it's showing up really well here, but mm -hmm. my new light has been helping me knit this. Um, so, so that's my only whip. That's it. Nice. Thanks. Laura. Okay. So, um, my first, I have two whips. My first is my, oops, that's the back, doesn't matter. My Hamilton Raglan by Beth McDonald Stone. This is what I'm doing for the knit along. And I love, love, love this design. Um, along the lines of what you're talking about for the provisional cast on, you cast on and you knit a few rows and then um, it's a turtleneck sweater. Right. And then you pick up and knit the turtleneck. And so I love that the seam that you have will be hidden by the fold over the turtleneck. But as she, she pointed out, I think in one of our discussions, um, if I started at the top of the turtleneck and just worked it down and then went into, it like, tends to, <laughs> as we've yeah. talked about me with my very small slanted shoulders, I knit um, a, another turtleneck one time and I just, and it was with mohair, so I couldn't frog it. It was just too much of a nightmare. And that's exactly what it did. It just went, and I keep like push pulling it up and <laughs> finally just did away with it. But um, <laughs> I really love this design. I love the um, twisted rib. I love the pop. Um, what I'm not loving, and I'm really struggling, so I still have one sleeve left to do and then the turtleneck. So not a lot. I'm not loving this yarn. It's... Um, I consider myself to be a pretty even knitter. And because this is a, um, a blown in chain construction and because it's really like fuzzy, um, I find that the stitches kind of get caught up together and I'm kind of pulling them apart. And, you know, probably like a lot of people, I knit without necessarily watching every single stitch. And I've just ended up with this very uneven, it's hard to explain. And it might improve with blocking, but I kind of got, um, I tried it on because I was, um, wanted to, you know, make sure I had the sleeve length where I wanted it. And when I tried it on, I just looked at this part and I was like, ooh, I'm not happy with that. So I will finish it, but um, I really want to knit this again in a different yarn because I Did really, you did you do a swatch and block it? I did. And, and did the blocking um, change it? Well, I don't or remember. Not? And um, it's all wrinkly. It's a bit at the yeah. bottom of the bag. I think it's a little better, but it's hard to see on a smaller thing. Yeah. I do think it's a little better, but I do, if you look closely, there's still a little unevenness in this. Yeah really wrinkly because it was it does look up. better it it looks like smoother than your than your sweater so maybe yeah. I, I love the it. lines in it like I love it. It's so I cool love this yeah it's my uh, for me it's my favorite of all her designs I just love the linearness and the boldness of the lines 
but um, that's can you talk about the neckline right now without the turtleneck on it could you just leave it as it is oh yeah you uh, could. In fact, okay. i think that um beth did one where she left it maybe she okay. made it a little bit longer but she didn't do a turtleneck okay um, and you definitely could do that okay um, thank you yeah I definitely uh, so would again, do that or will do that when I make it. <laughs> yeah, this is one of my, my personal favorites of her design. Um, and I'm just not, it's the yarn choice. It has nothing to do with the, the design. And I, I do want that sweater, maybe just in a, but the good thing about it is it's very light, mm -hmm. which I'm not really into wearing heavy, bulky sweaters anymore, I find. Um, anyway, so then I was kind of messing around and, you know, started a few things and wasn't happy with them. And I was a little bit of a, what I call a knitting funk, just not really sure. Um, and finally I went into, you know, I started digging through my stash just to say, what do I have that I haven't knit with? And I had, um, six skeins of this, um, fiber canopy, the fiber company canopy yeah. thing, and this col color is called blue stars it's um lighter blue it's a navy but it's a lighter navy that i think is showing there and this yarn is it's so soft it is alpaca wool and viscose i didn't know that it's so soft and this is such a pretty color and so it's a fingering so i think i just got on ravelry and searched and I found something called the Strelling, S-T-R-E-L-I-N-G, Strelling. I kept thinking, I kept putting in Sterling in the search engine and not getting it when I was trying to find it again. And it's just a long scarf shawl and it's gonna be so hard to show you. Um, <laughs> that it's just a long, um, it's about, it's supposed to be 16. I'm hoping mine will not be quite as wide. Rib, then stocking net, and then these, it just, yeah, uh, see that's what I saw that picture and I was like, oh. Um, so it's alternate stocking knit. Oh, I'm having so much trouble. And a, like a textured rib and a texture. Yeah, it's it's just really pretty. It shows up beautifully in a lighter color, but I had this and I happen to love navy as if anyone didn't know that. <laughs> uh, and it's making me happy. And it's gonna take a long time to finish, but it's I'm, I'm only, I'm about to finish the first of six gains. I don't know if I'll use all six because I don't want it to be too, too long, but um, it's making me happy right now. So those are my two Maybe. rips. Sorry, One. Laura, uh, who, who is the designer oh, of that? Um, and, and she calls herself Evie, but it's Evgenia Dupilly, D-U-P-I-L-Y. She's a German designer. And this the, the yarn specified is, um, Cheeky Rosie. Merino, Rosy Cheeky Rosie. Merino. Ah, that's, yeah. I think that's a German yarn, and I don't know if she does a lot of designs for them, because I think, if I recall, quite a few of her designs, like she might be one of their designers, okay. but her stuff is, and, and it'll be in the show notes, because I'm probably butchering her name, um, um, her, her aesthetic is like very sort of clean, minimalist, you know, kind of what mm -hmm. I like, and when I saw that scarf, if you see it on Ravelry, you'll see what I mean, it just it's so simple, but it's so beautiful. And uh, so that got me back, that got my knitting mojo back again. And I, I look forward to sitting down and I've just got to figure out what to do with my Hamilton, but. Yeah, yeah. let that sit for a little while. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, I have two whips. One, I think I showed in the last podcast. It was the press, Pressed Flowers by oh. Amy. Christophs, uh, and I used Skein Cocaine, her um, Royal DK, and oh, the first color so the is a color called Iris, and then the green is Succulent, and it's a fun net. It's, it's really so a fun good. net. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did put it down for a little while because um, I was visiting a friend, and this was this is really not a well. I guess I could talk to her and everything, but. I really wanted to talk. So <laughs> I decided to cast on a new sweater and I cast on the first Raglan uh, sweater by Jared Flood for uh, Brooklyn Tweed. And I knit, I'm knitting it in the Harrisville designs. Um, they're day, I keep always day shade. It's <laughs> That's day what I call light. it. It's daylights. <laughs> and this color is Bloodshot 
um, and it has little specks of pink and I don't like that name actually. No, I know. I'm gonna have to eyes all the time. Like I know. Um, I know, and I'm. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It's well, it's it's like they say a first raglan sweater. There you go. Like it's just the directions. They hold your hand throughout the whole thing. I mean, there's even a chart there that I picked the size three, and you fill in you you know how many stitches for that size and it, it really nice. they, there's not a place of that pattern that doesn't tell you exactly what to do so highly recommend for a first time you know first sweater i'll show you a final picture of it i don't know can you see yeah eh? yeah and so i'm gonna of course make it longer i I'm, the sleeves i make a little bit longer but not too much. I don't think I'll go to the wrist on those because it's got a really nice shape, those sleeves. Um, so this colorway though is, so, I love this yarn. I love the, I loved the night shades, Me too. night lights, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had the, I bought this at uh, Knit New Haven when we saw yes. Heaven. Worldwide, Worldwide Knit and Public Worldwide Day. Worldwide Knit and Public Day. Yes. And I just grabbed a bunch of skeins, not yep. knowing what I was going to knit with it. And then Laura, I think you showed me the first raglan sweater. And then I said, yep, it just shows off the yarn really well. You know, look at all those pretty little speckles in it. And yeah. I'm not really a speckly person, but that's as speckly as I get right now. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It Thanks. almost looks tweedy. Yeah, exactly. So and it blocks beautifully. Yep. I don't know my swatch. I didn't block. This is no, no, no. Swatch. From the from the nightshades. Oh yeah, that was yeah. that was really nice. So I look forward to seeing that. Yeah. I'm just about to um, start the sleeves. You know, nice. What do they call it? Put the Separate. sleeves on hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be an easy one. An nice. Easy one. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, acquisitions. What, hun? I was just gonna say, Amy Christopher's has a new sweater that's coming out um, for um, maybe Rhinebeck. I think it's coming out next week, and it's really cool, textury. Mm. Really cool. Maybe she'll be wearing it, Kim. She maybe will be in real life. I won't be there, won't be there to fangirl her. She's <laughs> hinted that we'll she's do it for really you. Glad. <laughs> so I want. I can't go to Rhinebeck, so I'm hoping one of you sees it and sends me a picture. I will. We will. We will. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Lorian, I'm sure you have a few acquisitions. I do have a few. I've actually she did a supplement. Two... I know. <laughs> I, I'm going to put them in two categories, though. No, no, no. But you did a supplement on Instagram. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I'm still showing them all, Kate. Sorry. <laughs> no, okay. no, it's the thing. You... The first thing I'm showing because I don't remember exactly what I showed and what I didn't is I ordered this book. Uh, okay. It's called Wilderness Knits by L Lincoln Newman. And I ordered it because I wanted this pattern, but it was not out in English. It had not been translated, um, but it is full of, uh, I wanna say Norwegian, Icelandic, I'm not entirely sure. So I shouldn't be saying, but beautiful um, knit garments, um, all color work. And uh, I, I had seen this sweater knit by, uh, Inga of Knitting Traditions podcast. And I said, I need to get this. And I, I'd seen some other sweaters knit. Well, not only did I order the book, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I suddenly saw that the yarn was on sale. Oh boy. Suddenly. So <laughs> the yarn, it's knit in uh, Isitex Alifos Loki. Which is inexpensive yarn to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Kind of. The price ran varied by probably about 30% though from the different places where I acquired it. Wow. From. Oh, even more because one, one skin I got for $2 in a deep stash. <laughs> so this is my main color. I'm going to show you all the colors that I got so quickly. Um, but I also want to mention where I ordered them from. So I got this yarn from a whole bunch of places because this yarn is backordered in many colors and there are supply chain issues. So I went shopping in different um, online or not really local, but in someone's stash and things like that in order to put this collection together. So 
I will be using this as my main color and I, it uses three or four, four other colors, but I ended up grabbing a couple of extras. So this one is called Arctic Exposure. This one is Light Indigo. Oh boy, this one is Golden. Ooh. This is Harvest. Mm. Like a burnt orange, I like that. This is called Amber. This is burnt orange. Oh. <laughs> and this, is cypress green. They're so, it's, it's actually coming, it, oh, it looks black on my screen. It does. Um, it's a green. Uh, so I won't need all of these colors, but um, I could have bought more. <laughs> it just went on a roll, a bit of a roll. Uh, so, so that is not going to be something I work on. It's a really heavy wool, but I think it's a bit airy as well. It's the bulky weight lopey yarn. And I bought those yarns from uh, Stars Hollow Yarns where I know some of us have made other purchases. And I just wanted to give them a shout out because they use uh, eco-friendly packaging and I order a lot of stuff and I don't always see this. And it was really, um, it made me happy. And I thought their card was really cute. It says shine brightly, tread lightly, knit nightly cute <laughs> really adorable and lisa there big shout out because she was really helpful in helping me find one of the colors um, that i needed i also ordered yarn from well i talked about my look and needle tip so i did get fives and fours from patanga yarns i also ordered i realized i didn't have any halloween stitch markers or progress keepers so I found some very adorable ones from a new store to me called, can you see that Monarchy Threads on Etsy? And I'll just show a couple. I ended up getting all progress keepers. <laughs> Oops, that's a little ghost. And a house. And a mad pumpkin. <laughs> and a happy pumpkin. And a mummy. Mummy's actually kind of cute. No, that's cute. Yeah. And um, she's stuck in another one, a whole extra, which I think is really pretty. I don't know if you can see that. It's a moon. Yeah, pretty. With a star. So I'm, in, I'm having fun using those because they're festive right now. Very reasonably priced. Trust me, I shopped around. Like you could order like one pumpkin for $8 on a stitch marker. Or you could order a set for $8. So um, I always shop around things I, I suggest for you for the most part. Uh, let's see, I'm just checking my list. Okay, uh, fine. I caught this on just kind of a, a flash sale. So there's um, the Knit Smith is an indie dyer, but she I believe she's going to work at Cream City Yarns or Queen City Yarns, I'm not sure, but she's going to be starting to work in a yarn store. So she was depleting her inventory and she still has some skeins on her website. It's called The Knit Smith and they're very, very well uh, priced. So go now. Uh, this is a, was a special, she did this with Yak. Um, it's Merino Silk and Yak, it's a DK. I have two skeins of that. And this one is called Lapis Lazuli. It is a Merino Superwash and Nap a Tweed. These are going to be gifts. So there's those. I also, uh, sorry, one quick step, grabbed some yarn in the latest sale from Nipkick. Uh, I have been just swooning over every single one of Thea Coleman's designs lately. I love this, this um, vest that she designed for Rhinebeck. It's called Ghost in the I don't know, sorry, I'm not saying that right. Something ghost. Um, but that's not what this is for. Anyway, I was really wanting to knit a, I think it's going to become a cardigan in like an oatmeal -y color. And this is from Knit Pick. It's, it's simply wool worsted. And it is, it's in the colorway Winnie. We don't say exact. Oh, it just says 100% eco wool. So this is going to become a cabled cardigan, that's all kind of Thea designs, but I'm, I'm pretty obsessed with Thea and her patterns right now. 
even though I don't have one on the needles and I've only ever knit one. And in order to get my free shipping, I added two balls of Capra, which is Knit Picks uh, Cashmere Blend DK. This one's Meridian Heather. And this one is Tawny Heather. And they are a blend of, I can't remember, but they're very yummy. I knit my surgeon a hat in this. It's Merino and Cashmere, Merino wool and Cashmere. Uh, so that's that bag. Um, I recently had a sweater that I needed to frog. I, I just couldn't continue it. It wasn't turning, it was it's another example of one that wasn't working out for me. And I wanted to figure out what I was going to pivot it to become. Uh, so I, I ended up playing with some yarn in my stash and knitting a swatch that paired it with a, skein, a strand of Surrey. So it's a DK weight yarn, it's a cream color. And I paired it with uh, a strand of story that I, that I had, but it wasn't the color I would use. I loved the fabric it made. And then I found, so I went looking for Surrey. And believe it or not, you can sometimes just search on Etsy and find things that are seem to, to me to be great quality and a good, very good price. So this is uh, by Green Designs CS on Etsy. It is undyed Surrey alpaca. And she calls it, or it's called Wild Lilacs. Riled Lilac Moons, Selene Undyed Ecru. Ecru is the color. And I have a few skeins of this and that's to match my yardage of the merino that I'll pair it with for a sweater. You know what sweater or no? Uh, I would, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a Felix cardigan. Ah. Oh, nice. Um, because, because I got the gauge I was looking for mm -hmm. uh, with that. Nice. Okay, a um, couple more things that I've bought. So we were on vacation in upstate New York mm -hmm. for a long weekend, my husband and I, and we really didn't go do any shopping. It was mostly a convene with nature and see some friends. And we stumbled on our way home on the far a farmer's market and lo and behold, there was someone selling hand spun yarn there. So name is Kimberly's, can you see that? Kimberly's hand woven hand spun. And my husband liked this color, which is called black pine. It's kind of a black navy blue green. And it's fairly thick. I want to say it's probably about a DK worsted. It's a single ply, but it was really nice to talk to her. And then I got a skein of a marled natural color of something for me. Okay, two more things that I bought. So I have a list, I keep a list of not only projects I wanna make, but yarns I'm interested in trying. And one of the things, one of the dyers on there is um, the Wool Baron. This is her picture. And she had this color, this is only a 50 gram skein. She's out of, they're out of uh, Louise, I think is her name, out of Canada. And I don't do a lot of purchasing from Canada because sometimes shipping gets crazy. But this was, this was up in her shop. You have to grab it when it's there. And it was, it's called Beat the Heat. And it's a lot of neons. I will make a pair of socks with this. But I thought it was really Is fun. Is it self-striping, Lorian, or no? It is. It's yeah. self-striping. Yep. You can see how she, you know, self-striping dyers will usually put a picture of what it yeah. will work up to. So I think that that will be fun. This is another dyer who I very much wanted to just check out her yarns. And she was doing kind of a mystery mini skein uh, sale, a mini bundle. Her name is Sam and she's near us in Woodbury, Connecticut. It's beachy, beachy, beachy breeze fibers. And I asked for pinks and purples and I'm pretty sure, you know, she delivered quite nicely. So those will be, I don't know what, those are just going in the bin. Okay. I think that is all of my acquisition. I have a couple of quick things to share, things I want. So just because we've, uh, it's been a while. So I wanna quickly share, I won some yarn from Bad Lux Designs. This is her birthday Kate sock set. It has two minis and this really vibrant orchid color. And she sent me a lovely note, this adorable pin as well. <laughs> it's a stash master. That's appropriate um, for you. <laughs> I think, uh, and a coupon and a sticker and a really just a very sweet note. So
So I considered putting this in my West Knit mystery, knit a long oh, shawl, yeah. and it just, I, I, I didn't want to break up the set. I felt a little guilty, but Kate herself said that she does that. So check out her yarns. I think she's super talented and very much up and coming. I think she's out of maybe Colorado. I also, this was kind of funny. So some of our friends, I think on Instagram probably were messaging me that I'd won something. So they watched the podcast to announce that I'd won something before I had. This is <laughs> uh, some yarn from, it's from Knit Crate. It is a DK weight yarn that is 50% uh, alpaca, 25 Highland Merino wool blend and 25 Surrey alpaca. And uh, this was in Knit Crate. They call it the Vitalana Oasis. And it was, uh, from Knit Style, Sharon and Rich at Knit Style Yarns. She gives away her knit crates uh, in a giveaway. Uh, so I, I won these and she just, I just received them. And then lastly, I entered a sock knit along, uh, Knit Knack Zach. If you are not following him or subscribing to, following him on Instagram or subscribing to his, his podcast, I really recommend it. He is a beautiful, beautiful knitter. Um, and he and Heather from the Four Star Knits did a sock knit along called Stocks and Socks, like Birkenstock. I didn't really, I didn't steal my daughter's Birkenstock, but I, you just had to knit a pair of socks. And I was sometime in the summer when they ran this or late fall, still knitting socks at the time. And my name was drawn. So I got to choose a sock set. These are called Sock Tails. This is by Muse2320. So that was exciting. I'm totally unfamiliar with her, with this, with Muse yarns. And this was called Shirley Temple. So you can see there's also these oh, very cute little stitch markers. Oops, cute. Backwards, this is a set of a pair of cherries. And they're on these really nice big rings. This one's pretty large. So I think that's going to be very useful. Um, so I will probably knit this around Valentine's Day because it's like, pink and red and I'm sure I'll be in touch with that then and I oh one more thing because I forgot to mention it last time was I entered uh Dana Ray makes on uh Instagram was holding a Christmas in July knit along and I entered that and was drawn to win some patterns I won one of her patterns and I won a pattern from uh Remembrances Pottery who is Natalie who has um, some very beautiful sock designs as well. So I will share in our show notes which patterns I chose. And that is the wrap. You don't even need to go to Rhinebeck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, got it, you, got it. you have enough projects going on. So um, Kate. Okay. Um, so I mentioned a little while ago um, that I got a new light and these, um, this company called Ben Q, um, they DM'd us on Instagram and they asked if we would be willing to try out one of their desk lamps because um, they were interested to see what crafters thought of it. And you can see the picture of it there. I actually have it on the table in front of me now. Um, so I said, sure. I said, well, we have to do. And they said, just, you know, talk about what you think about it and let us know um, because we'd be interested in getting into getting, getting some crafters interested in it. So, cause really it's like a desk lamp for working with screens. Um, so anyway, I, how they found our little podcast in Taiwan, I don't know. Um, the woman that contacted us, I asked her, I said, are you a knitter? Like, and she said, no. So um, anyway, I received the lamp and I've been using it while I've been knitting my um, love note. And I must say, it's really good for like picking up those, um, those stray mohair hairs because sometimes the fingering and the mohair kind of separate, but I haven't had to go backwards to, to find it. Um, and you can adjust the top of it. The top of it's shaped, I, I, I call it, it's sort of like a smile, this top part up here. And you can adjust that up and down and back and forth. It's on like a, one of those ball swivels. And then the neck of it, you can adjust um, front and back like this. So you can kind of point it to where you want it. 
Um, so that's been really good. And you can change the, I'm, I'm not gonna do it now because it'll screw up my lighting here because I'm still playing with it. You can change the temperature of the light. So like, it's like, like a bright white or like a yellow white, or I don't even know what the other colors are. And you can adjust the, the brightness of it as well. Um, so I'm still trying to play and figure out that. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how it looks for the podcast today, actually. I think um, it's better than my usual lighting. And um, so um, we'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes below and you can check them out if you want to. Um, so that was my first acquisition. My I second- think you have the best light, I think you have the best lighting out of all of us right now, for sure. Oh, yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it looks good. It's it yeah and it's really I mean like I said it's really interesting I wish you could like see it but well I guess if I do I, there it is right there see it's like a it's like a see it's like a, it's like a little yeah. blue smile and you turn it on and off by touching this ring up here you just touch it and then this dial here is how you adjust the brightness and the and the color of it so um it, it's it's an interesting shape and design um and it doesn't get hot like it's not it's not hot and i think it's it's really good light like i said for this mohair i i think i'm in a blue period because i finished up this and then i started this while using it um and as i said i really like a few times i've missed you know when i was looking at the tv or something i've missed a strand of mohair but i've only gotten like one stitch away and i've caught it and i think it's because of the light um so yeah, yeah, it saves me from tinking backwards or trying to pick it up, um, trying to ladder down with mohair and fingering is not not fun to pick it back up. So um, anyway, that's um, that's my new BenQ light. I also won something on Instagram. Um, I want to give away from um, untangled yarn at Etsy.com. And she partnered with um, Yarn and Stitches, which um, you can get like a subscription for a monthly um, like yarn and goodies. So they sent me one of those subscriptions and it was like sit and sip or something. That was the theme of it. So it came with this little mug and the little um, coffee flavoring, vanilla latte and some tea and biscotti and some candies. And then this beautiful skein of Aran weight in a colorway pink matcha latte. It's a super wash merino and it's got a cute, Lorian, you would like this little cute little coffee mug um, stitch marker <laughs> on it. Um, so this may become a hat for one of my eight nieces because <laughs> it's very pink. Um, and then my only other acquisition was I did a knitting weekend with um, my class that I teach and we did a little retreat out on Nantucket and we went to the yarn shop out there called Flock and I totally copied Kim and bought the cashmere uh, mohair watch cap. And this is designed by um, Sheila, the owner of Flock. And it's, um, it's a skein of cashmere, hedgehog cashmere, um, hedgehog fingering. This is the fingering, this is the cashmere and hedgehog mohair. And you strand them together and get a little cap. But I liked the little pop of color in it. Um, it's blowing out a little bit with my new light. <laughs> um, so I'll be knitting that up soon sometime soon i'll cast that on and um that's it for me <laughs> i'm not I, i'm just speaking of rhinebeck like i'm not really like i don't really have anything in mind that i'm shopping for if i see you know a spectacular sample that i know i won't be able to get later i may go ahead and purchase something but for right now i'm just really excited to like see people and talk to people and see their sweaters and just the whole atmosphere is what I'm looking forward to. So me too. Be sure to, if you see Kate and I come up. Yes, please do. Kate. Please do. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. We'll definitely. miss our partners in crime though. I know we will. We will. 
Laura, what have you bought? You're muted. <laughs> That's because my dog was outside barking. There you and go. I yeah. Myself. Sorry. Um, so when I was sort of in my knitting funk, I was spending time on Ravelry as one does when one's in a knitting funk looking for inspiration. And I came across this piece. It's called Capture the Moment. And it's basically like a cardigan poncho kind of thing. And it's hard to see, but the, this neck band has just this beautiful texture. And then it's just stocking it with these awesome pockets. And I was like, ah, that's what I want in my wardrobe. It's kind of something I've been looking for. So it's by designed by Carol Sunday of Sunday Knits. And I ordered, I got, I don't know how many, whatever, however many skeins I needed. Yeah, can you see that a little better? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, um, Kate has a better light than me. Um, <laughs> I, uh, this is Sunday Knits Nirvana, um, which is really soft charcoal as well. And it just, to me, like it's a layering piece. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm always trying to do this, but I'm not, I don't always succeed. I'm trying to, when I look at a pattern say, if that were in a store, would I buy that yeah. piece? And the answer for this piece was like, absolutely, yes. I love that kind of big, kind of oversized, but it's light, it's a fingering, but it's kind of an oversized layering piece. And um, I don't know when I'm gonna get to that, but that was my, that was my acquisition. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. see, I, I have something. I, ugh, Instagram kills me sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria from Vita Lifestyle has been, was promoting her coffee collection. I hate coffee. I don't drink coffee, but the <laughs> colors got me. Oops, I'm getting entangled. These are a few of them. Ooh. I just, maybe it was the way she displayed it. I, I, I don't know all. So the, the, it's a DK classic. It's merino, cashmere, nylon, um, and it feels terrific. And this color is French vanilla. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. I'm just gonna, for now, just stare at it. Is that coming up backwards for you guys? Affogato, affogato. I think it's an Italian wine, or Italian um, coffee. Drink. Coffee. It's coffee, yeah. Yeah, and this is called Coffee Shop. Yep. Know, look how the colors are so yeah. good. It did a really nice job. Um, and cold brew, <laughs> one of my go-to colors. So um, oh. she sent a couple ideas of what to do. She has a couple patterns in DK right now, but I'm just going to sit with them and stare at them for a little while longer. Um, another purchase I made, I think you guys did this too, was the Cloudborn Fiber Superwash oh. Merino Sport oh, I Twist. About it. Yeah. yeah, it happened guys, so long ago. <laughs> I, it did happen so long ago, and I did it in that. the Espresso Heather, so I guess I'm in the coffee mode, coffee mode even though I don't drink coffee. But um, and I, with ideas of knitting Isabel Kramer's uh, newest, uh, might not be her newest sweater it's now. Not her newest it's not her newest not anymore, but not as, not as of today or yesterday. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I think you guys went on to webs and of course I didn't want to be left out. <laughs> <laughs> I got like a, um, sort of a pink Heather color and I forget what you got Kate. Mine is like a grayish, I think. Right. Yeah, I think so. I so. Like I said, I was going through my stuff. Like it's, it, we really, we haven't podcast since the end of August. And I'm like, what did I get between then and now? I totally yeah. forgot about that. I did too. Sorry. Thanks, Kim. No, I know. I know. Um, we all it, I think it was on sale, right? And it was really. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was so, yeah. I think it was $24 to get a sweater quantity of yeah. whatever that yarn is. And it feels good. Like it's it a does nice feel yarn. good. Yeah. I'm a little nervous about using a superwash for cabling, um, hmm. but we'll make it all sort of stretch out. Yeah, I'm not sure if it will be toothy enough. Kim, you'll to have to it. just do a very careful swatch and block it. Mm -hmm. Laura, you eight go by first. eight. Let it dry for three <laughs> days. 
Come wire back it. to it. Wire it. <laughs> Sorry, I think my internet is delayed a little bit. Do I seem choppy? It was a little jumpy, but a little okay. bit. Oh, good. We can see what happens. Yeah, time anyway, to wrap uh, up anyway. It is time to wrap up. Um, hopefully, we'll see some of you on Saturday. Again, so bummed, Laura and Lorianne won't be with us. That's we're gonna feel half of us is missing for sure. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. You'll be able keep, to move around faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep posting your photos on hashtag KPBMS for our knit along. And yeah. again, that ends at the end of October with lots of good prizes to come. And uh, like and subscribe if you feel like it. Um, mm-hmm. And it's nice to be back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Laura and Lorianne, have safe travels. Yeah. Enjoy your visits. And Thank we'll you. we'll see you guys hopefully earlier than yeah. this next past. month. We'll be <laughs> next month. Yeah. All okay. right. Thanks, Bye, all. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye bye.